With all these obstacles and all the difficult things we go through in life, music is there to help. Well, I'm just getting rolling now. Don't make it the final question. Come on, let's go. Hi, I'm Brett Premack. Welcome to Sunny Speaks, an ongoing documentary series celebrating the 80th birthday of the saxophone colossus, Sonny Rollins. Jazz transcends life and death as we know it on this planet. You see, jazz is something which is more universal, eternal. So it, ha it has, you say, optimistic about, well, I'm optimistic that, I'm optimistic about, <laughs> about, um, <laughs> This is funny, Hacken. I'm optimistic about um, the soul, okay? I'm optimistic about that. So therefore, I'm optimistic about jazz. Well, jazz is a force of nature. It's a feeling. It's a sense of liberation, sense of communing with nature, with higher things. That's what it is for me. For some people, it's a sense of abandon. That's why uh, you see people, some people listen to jazz, they want to dance. That's an element of it. But you know, people go to church and they also have a sense of abandon and they dance and everything in church. So I, I, I am saying that because people that want to detract from jazz would say that, oh, it's abandoned. That means you're doing something evil. Okay, so not necessarily so. So I use the word abandon, a sense of abandon in the sense that you could abandon yourself to the Lord when you're in a sanctified church or someplace. So it's that kind of abandon. It's an abandon of spirit. So that's part of it. It's a sense of hope that, that life can be better, that things can be better. It's a sense of happiness where things, wow, this is, this is great. And that's some of what jazz is. I play jazz probably because in the former existence I might have been a musician and uh, so that when I was born I was already really attuned to jazz. I was, I mean, I heard, as I said, when I was in the crib almost, I was listening to Fats Waller and I mean, I know Fats Waller from earliest memories I can think about Fats Waller. And it, it, it imbued me with joy. So I think not only did I like me, and a lot of people like jazz, but I think I had an extra pull from wherever to become a musician, to want to do it. Now, uh, I was also artistically inclined. I liked to draw, I liked to do watercolor paintings. And um, so I was artistically inclined. So that might be part of also my form of existence, whatever I came out this time as an artist. How do, how do I bring myself up? How do I get to a high place whenever I solo, whenever I, I perform. That's always, you know, 
that there's no way. If you have an antagonist next to you, in a way it's easier in a sense because it's going to push you. But if you're by yourself, as you say, well, uh, and without another instrument, I think about that the other day, I was talking to somebody and about something, and we were saying, and I explained to them, well, um, Gene Ammon is a great saxophone player. He didn't, he was playing with the quartet. Uh, Dexter Gordon played, I mean, a lot of guys play with, they, they didn't always play with another instrument next to them on the front line. So uh, you have to bring yourself up. Now how, well, I don't know how. You just realize that you want to sound good. Uh, you, you know, you don't want to sound bad. You want to try to elevate the uh, music. And uh, so you do what you uh, can do.